This is what they do behind closed doors at Google DeepMind, at OpenAI, at Anthropic and other frontier secret labs. So first I take some text that I want to use to pre-train my large language model. This is example. In today's ever-evolving world, technology has become etc. So there are 500 characters in this example. And then I convert every character to a byte. So it's byte value. So now I have 500 bytes. That is 500 numbers. Because value of a byte can be between 0 and 255. Because one byte is 8 bits. So you can represent those numbers with 8 bits. And now that I have a sequence of these 500 bytes for each letter, letter or character, I will just group pairs starting from first two bytes and the next two bytes, next two bytes. And if I draw those pairs as dots on 2D coordinate system, we can see patterns in data. We can see how bytes exist in data. We can learn so much about data here. So LLMs are gonna be taking bytes as raw input, not tokens, bytes because digital world is in bytes. But uh, putting bytes into LLMs creates huge sequences. And you know that transformers scale quadratically with the sequence length. So this would take too much memory. But by the end of this year, uh, those frontier labs should be starting to train LLMs on bytes. And XAI and uh, Grok are already training some models on bytes. Elon Musk said that. In this video, we will do open source research on analyzing bytes how bytes exist in space, in world, in data, analyzing patterns and coming up with ideas and understandings that will help us better group bytes when we process them with LLMs. Maybe we don't need to put every byte. We can create groups, we can process bytes in different ways, but we first need to deeply understand how bytes exist in text data, how they are arranged. Because if you had random bytes, then all of these dots would be scattered everywhere. But you see that we have some structure here. So we can understand what structure bytes create in text, to text data, in language, and then design our LLM and other models for, uh, with that in mind. Look, uh, these red ones are random bytes, but these blue ones are from our text data. You see how there is a lot more pattern to the text data than random bytes. And we want to understand that to understand how bytes behave in language so we can build better uh, AIs that speak language. Just to repeat, each of these points is two bytes next to each other, one for X and one for Y axis. And in our data, two bytes next to each other form patterns. And those pairs form patterns. And I'm just talking to Claude Sonnet and I'm uh, telling it what to do and it's coding this, it's very simple, it's very easy. Here you can see space and letter. So space has same coordinate for X, and then each letter has its own coordinate. So upper coordinates are lowercase letters, lower coordinates are uh, big case letters. And here, this is letter space. Now space is Y coordinate, it's second byte, same coordinate. And then we have here dot. We have some special characters as well here. And then we have here a cluster of small letter pairs, a lot of small letter pairs, and sometimes big letter and big letter pairs. You can use any dataset, but I'm using Hugging Face, Small LM Corpus, Cosmopedia V2 part, and just telling Claude to do all of this. Now I made analysis of 50 times more characters. And again, small letter pairs are all grouped up. We have some random dots somewhere around, uh, spaces and letter grouped up here. And that's uh, most groups. I think it was just four times more, not 50 times more, because the document didn't have enough. Now we will use persistent homology analysis. This is a bit more advanced method. And I just prompted Claude and you can do this. I said, uh, now create a Python file and plot a very simple. We want to start with simple because it's not going to be able to do it. Uh, just do one thing, show plot and ask it, uh, what can we learn about bytes? I want to learn about it so I can figure out the best ways to use them as input to LLMs. Look at this. So. Uh, we have around, uh, we have 202 different dots here. And we measure it in a way if we have same dot, same two letters, so they are one component. 
So we have 202 different components here. Each dot is one component. And we wanna analyze the structure. One of the way to analyze is to use persistent homology. So I'm gonna try to explain the best way I understand it. For each dot, we start growing a radius around it. When radi like a circle, when two circles touch, they become one component. This will measure things like how clustered or how far components are from each other. So in the beginning, when radius is zero, there is no circle around, we have 202 separate uh, distinct dots. As we grow the radius a little bit, as soon as we grow by one here, already 100 uh, dots merge. And 100 components merge become... Uh, so that means we have a lot of clustered close by nearby data that are just one uh, number away from each other. So all of them merge. As connection radius expands, we see that also we have very steep, a lot of merging because all of them are clustered. So that means data is very clustered, okay? And as we go further and further away, maybe at this 20 point, for example, these all merge and then maybe they expand to these. But then these here are separate, there are still their circles are still not far away to reach circles of these. So that's why uh, more or less and less of them actually merge as we expand the radius. But in the end, all of them merge. So here, uh, this is example, we have a radius of connection 30 and we have three separate components. So I'm guessing this component maybe, maybe here component is somehow separate. Maybe this guy is also completely separate. But as we expand to 41, now we have just one component, so all of them merge. All of them have uh, big enough circles, every dot, so they all overlap and connect to each other, the big circles. From there we can learn that uh, byte point cloud reveals the character distribution in your text. Common ASCII characters clustered around values 32 to 126. The persistent components that are persisting through a lot of merges, so they are far away from each other, uh, likely represent distinct character patterns or encoding structures in your text. For example, if you have a JPEG image and it has header describing the image and data and the actual image body, actual like colors and pixels and values. So that header, if you analyze those two things geometrically, header will be far away or different in different in some ways than this image. This is how I prompt uh, Claude Opus, act as AI research scientist. Here I gave it the code of the analysis that draw that uh, graph. You can find it in the GitHub page, uh, this GitHub page. Your goal is to analyze bytes in data so you can make LLM that will take bytes as input. You must use persistent homology. One guy told me to use this and it seems legit. Uh, you must write your reports and analysis in understandable and well-explained way. So this persistent homology is just the way of analyzing what we were doing right now. Uh, the growing the circles and stuff. Uh, you must form good experiments to learn more. Form great hypotheses that you will test. Later form conclusion on how bytes should be used and inputted or grouped and processed in LLM. So I'm going to read and I'm going to supervise it. So it's going to employ persistent homology to uncover the intrinsic topological structure of text data as the, at the byte level. This analysis aims to inform the design of more efficient and universal byte level LLM that can handle um, any language or data modality without tokenization. What we know for certain right now is that text converted to bytes has these natural groups that it groups in these different spaces that we saw on the graph. Hypothesis one, byte frequency manifolds statement. Bytes form low dimensional manifolds in high dimensional space corresponding to linguistic structures, vowels, consonants, punctuations, etc. Cross-lingual topological invariants. I would like this to be more understandable. Anyways, statement. 
Uh, different languages and scripts exhibit distinct topological signatures that can be exploited for efficient encoding. Okay, so we need to find how they are grouped and then we can maybe convert those groups into patches or something. So like group a bunch of bytes and convert it into a single vector embedding. But this is what tokenization is kind of doing. It's uh, grouping bytes that are next to each other. So I'm not sure what advantage we would have if we... Okay, so what are we even then trying to find here? Let's see, I don't know. We're just trying to understand. Hypothesis 3. Hierarchical byte structures. Statement. Bytes naturally organize into hierarchical structures that mirror linguistic hierarchies. Character 2. Morpheme to word. So we have this graph. Y coordinate is the current byte. Uh, X coordinate is the next byte. So if we have byte 26, there is high probability because it's yellow that the next byte will be 2. So in our text, we just counted. I have just a little bit of text, so this is just a little bit of data to show you how this could be analyzed. So this is probability that the next uh, byte is of the next byte. We would probably apply this to entire corpus of data or a big chunk or a few random chunks. So this is just for uh, first 50 bytes. So then this second, it's a bit difficult for me to understand. Um, so you have birth. This is when we are expanding circles from each dot, each byte pair. And, and when two circles merge, you have birth of this new component and you have death of the two old components so the birth of first two components happened in the beginning when he started expanding the circle and then when they merged those two components die and there is a new birth of new component it looks like it would take me quite a while to understand what this graph means though so the blue dots are uh, two or it's just connections and yellow dots are loops where you can go in a loop between these, let's say, three dots, connected dots. There is explanation by chat GPT, but it seems quite complex. I don't know what, what, it's, what it says. So these points at the diagonal where X, where birth is equal to death, uh, those appear and quickly disappear. And that's noise, as chat GPT explains. Here we have these connections at birth, they get connected. So this is maybe at birth or a bit after birth. But then as the radius expands, they die because they get merged into different components. So the further it is from diagonal, it means there is more structure, more persistent structure to it. For example, it's an island that doesn't get connected, merged with anything. So I think you want to identify these persistent structures that get born early and die la later. So we can work with these persistent structures and we don't care about these that happen and vanish instantly. But that's, to the best of my understanding in these like two minutes, this is probably something you would look into for days, weeks, months. This diagram also says that at these scales where radius is around 0.2 to 0.4 of units, I think, I don't know what one unit is. Maybe one unit is like one byte distance. I'm not sure. But these clusters are so that they merge here. So this is this shows the clusters. And then we have some clusters merging here, some here, here, here. So these same blue points, they are just drawn here as bars, starting from zero up until 0 0.2. So here on the right, we have the same thing as this one, but it's just the length of its life is in this bar. So we have a bunch of points that get born here, you see, get born and then uh, they die early. So these lower ones here die early because you see death here. And these higher ones, they live for longer. So this is this, these bars are showing their length of life. Then we have these loops. They are forming after some edges form, not in the beginning. And they live for a short period of time 
here in this case of these bytes so the way i understand this there is no good structure to pick and then work on on based on that because they all die quickly i'll show you here i my camera was uh, uh, over it so in middle image image 2 uh, this is good for spotting how far each feature is from diagonal a proxy for importance because it means it lives longer on diagonal things are popping into existence and dying immediately and then this barcode image 3 this is good to visualize exactly when features exist as you scan epsilon you can almost watch the topology evolve here you see importance here you see how topology evolves when it exists that will be it for this video i'm gonna uh, leave this github below and you can uh, add comments issues suggestions in the github or in the comments here uh, maybe this is a good idea maybe i'm gonna look to explore this further and uh, see you next time